When I was younger, the term coder reminded me of a man in a polo and eyeglasses, sitting alone in front of a computer, furiously typing strings of numbers. As a young girl, this scenario didn't particularly appeal to me, and this sentiment is common among young girls when they first encounter coding. Hi, I'm Yuhan, and I teach young girls to code. Today, we live in an era characterized by the limitless possibilities of computer science. Computer science is applied in many areas of our daily lives, including electronics, communication, the internet, and more. However, the number of women studying computer science has been decreasing since the 1980s. In fact, only about 18 to 20% of computer scientists are women. Girls simply aren't exposed to the possibilities of computer science. This unfamiliarity with the subject often leads to these discouraging stereotypes. On the other hand, from a young age, boys are introduced to video games, robots, computers, and other gadgets that pique their interest in STEM. I consider myself lucky. While working for a large tech company, my dad was very enthusiastic about the products he was selling. He would explain them to me using big acronyms like GPU and RTX. So I quickly learned that computer science played a major role in many areas that I was interested in, including animation and design. So despite my preconceived notions about the subject, I willingly downloaded coding apps, enrolled myself in classes, and jumped at opportunities to satiate my curiosity and learn more about the field. But what about girls who don't have this encouragement? How do we inspire girls to become interested in an innovative field when they would rather do something else? For the past four years, I have worked with Code Art, a nonprofit organization that aims to increase the number of women studying computer science. I am teaching weekly coding lessons for middle school girls at the local library. And I'm glad to be teaching girls who are eager to come into class every week and tackle whatever fun project I threw with them. But this meant that if you were a student in my class, you were already interested in computer science, as you had to play some sort of role in your own enrollment into the club. So the question was, how can we reach a wider audience? In the summer of 2019, Code Art made an ambitious leap to expand their mission by creating professional development programs for Miami-Dade County public school teachers. We wanted to empower teachers, mainly art teachers, so that they could inspire their own students by integrating coding lessons into their art curriculums. This endeavor made so much sense to me. After all, girls were mostly drawn to art, and encountering an engaging art lesson, coding lesson in an art curriculum was a spontaneous introduction to the creative process of programming. But there was also a big challenge. We recruited art teachers who mainly taught in elementary and middle schools. And understandably, many of them were unfamiliar with computer science. They did not view themselves as having the capability to code. And like most young girls, they thought that coding involves convoluted or boring concepts. So to ease their doubts, our team created a curriculum of four introductory coding lessons involving 3D modeling, game design, and more, proving to teachers that computer science is not a foreign concept. In fact, using code is simply a new medium to generate art. Using a program to code a 3D model is similar to wielding clay to create a sculpture. For example, in the 3D modeling lesson, I taught the teachers to create this fish in Tinkercad, a process in which they learned not just the software, but also basic computer controls, and how to visualize their design three-dimensionally by modeling it with Play-Doh. So if we think about it this way, coding and art are naturally interrelated. Learning to code is simply adding a new wrench to the toolbox. And when the teachers realize this, they became enthusiastic about learning to code. They were no longer phased by the complexity 
or the number of parameters for difficult functions. Instead, they were excited to experiment and apply their creativity. In one lesson, we taught the teachers to generate their own self-portraits using JavaScript on Khan Academy. The teachers' projects went from this basic design to self-portraits that showed characters through hobbies, cultural elements, and even abstract interpretations. This is the barrier we learned to break for every teacher in the room and every student that they will go on to teach. Trying something new seems daunting until you try it and approach it from your own perspective while connecting it to something that you're already familiar with. In 2019, over 60 art teachers attended the professional development program. This past summer, it was conducted virtually. And to date, we estimate that this initiative has reached about 2,000 girls in Miami-Dade County. Here's an image of self-portraits that were generated by students in art class. Now, I don't expect everyone to learn JavaScript or take up 3D modeling, but it's important to realize that in order to break barriers in the real world, like overcoming the gender gap in STEM, one must first learn to overcome doubts within their own mind. Blurring mental barriers, like stereotypical assumptions in STEM, allows prospective coders, especially women, to fully explore the potential of computer science, especially its application in other fields, like the arts. Such challenges are opportunities to build onto existing knowledge while merging it with something new. Thank you.